Okay, let's do our first example on this tensile stress situation. So in the last few videos, we were looking at this relationship, which is really a relationship between the stress and the strain of a material when it's being pulled. And this relationship is really saying one thing. It's saying that the stress is directly proportional to the strain of the material by this constant, this proportionality constant y, which we called Young's modulus. And in this example, we have this wire that's constrained to a ceiling here at the top, and at the end of the wire at the bottom, there's this piece of block. It, it's just a piece of mass that's hanging on this wire. Now the wire itself is 2.2 meters long and the diameter of the wire, so this is a circular cross-sectional area, a circular wire, the diameter of this wire is 1.3 millimeters. And at the bottom here, this block of mass weighs about five kilograms. So this is a five kilogram mass that's being suspended on this wire. Now, when this mass is attached to this wire, the problem also states that it stretches, the wire stretches by a very tiny amount. And that tiny amount is one millimeter. So the original length of the wire is 2.2 meters, but when we attach this mass to it, it stretches the wire by an additional one millimeter. And the question is asking, what is the Young's modulus for this wire? Okay, so because we have this stress to strain relationship given by this equation, we can figure out all of these terms and it's mostly a plug and chug. So you plug these values into this equation and we should be able to solve for Young's modulus. So let's start off on the left side of the equation, this F over A, which is our tensile stress. Now our F, we know force to be uh, mass times gravity. So we have mass, which is this five kilograms and our gravitational constant is 9.81 meters per second squared. So we have five kilograms, which is the mass, times 9.81 meters per second squared. And this is equal to about 49.05 newtons. Okay, awesome. What about the area? Remember, the area is a circle. And the diameter of this circle, the diameter of this wire, is 1.3 millimeters. Okay, so in order to figure out the area, we need pi times r squared. Well, if the diameter is 1.3 millimeters, then the radius is going to be half of that, which is 0 0.65 millimeters. And to keep this in consistent units, uh, I'm going to divide by 1000 and I'll get 0 0.00065 meters. Okay, awesome. Well, we can now take this radius and plug it into our area equation. And that becomes pi times 0 0.00065 meters squared. And this turns out to be about 1.327 times 10 to the minus sixth meters squared. Now, if we take F over A, which is this expression right here, we have our 49 Newtons divided by the 1.3 times 10 to the minus sixth uh, meters squared as the area we get a value of 3.696 times 10 to the seventh uh, Newton per meter squared. So that is our stress that's, so that is the tensile stress inside of this wire as it's being pulled by this mass. Okay, cool, so we have this left side of the equation. How about the right side? Well, let's look at this term right here, this delta L over L, which we know to be our strain value. And remember, strain is unitless. It's really a ratio between how much the wire has stretched over its initial length. So both units are in units of length. And if you take length over length, uh, the units cancel out and you're just left with a ratio. Okay, cool. So what is our delta L? Delta L is how much this wire elongated when the mass was attached. So originally the length was 2.2 meters, but when we added this five kilogram mass to the wire, it stretched it by one millimeter. And the original length, again, was 2.2 meters. So the strain is gonna be delta L over L, which is going to be one millimeter divided by 2.2 meters. Now remember, 
because this ratio of delta L over L is unitless, you can either convert millimeters into meters or convert this meter into millimeters. Either one will work, you'll get the same exact strain value. So I'll just convert the delta L value, this one millimeters into meters, and I can do that by dividing by a thousand and I'll get 0 0.001 meters. Okay, cool. So we can take both of these values and do delta L over L to figure out what the strain is. Uh, that is 0 0.01 or 001 meters over 2.2 meters. And I get a strain of about 4.5454 times 10 to the minus fourth. And again, this is dimensionless. There are no units here. All right, awesome. So we know what our F over A value is, our tensile stress and we know what our delta L over L value is, our strain. We can take both of those values and plug them in here and here, and we can solve for Y, which is our Young's modulus. So if I rewrite this, uh, this equation right here in terms of Y, I get the Young's modulus is equal to our stress value, our tensile stress value, F over A, divided by our strain, which is delta L over L. And this turns out to be 3.696 times 10 to the seventh Newton per meter squared, divided by the strain value of 4.5454 times 10 to the minus fourth. And again, because this strain is dimensionless, our Young's modulus is gonna take on the units of stress, which is Newton per meter squared. So if I plug this into my calculator, I get about 8.13 times 10 to the 10th Newton per meter squared. That is the Young's modulus of this wire.